today, it's a little cloudy. It's been raining all day. Um, yeah, decided I need to do some maintenance on my bike. We're gonna do an oil change. Uh, I wanna change the air filter, which will be, it'll be pretty easy, but you gotta do some customizing because it is a custom filter. Um, and then I figure while we're, while we're doing the filter, might as well check, might as well check the push rods too and make sure all that stuff is adjusted correctly. Um, and yeah, just some general maintenance, nothing, uh, nothing too exciting, but figure it's gotta get done. So let's do it. Well, my drain plug got stuck in my funnel, which then uh, caused a backup. But we are, uh, we're draining. That oil is black. Right, so as you guys saw, got all the oil out of the tank. Had a little bit of a mishap with the, uh, with the drain plug getting perfectly wedged into, uh, into the funnel causing a backup in the funnel, so my funnel didn't really do the trick, but you'll have that sometimes. So next thing I'm gonna do, uh, just put some of the thread tape uh, on my drain bolt just to make sure I have a really good seal. Thread that in, um, and then just remove the filter, put, uh, put some oil in, we'll be good there. I did realize I need, to, um, I need to seal up my exhaust a little bit better. I do have an exhaust leak, mainly, mainly on the rear exhaust, so I'm gonna just use some black silicone, seal that up, and um, Air filter, create the air filter, check push rods, all that good stuff. So let's get to this right here. It's always tricky. Like I always forget which way to put this on so it doesn't unravel itself when you start threading it in. Um, it's like once you do it a bunch of times, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. But if you haven't done it in a while, you kind of forget. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna somewhat wing it. We're gonna get it. Uh, built up pretty good here. It's always that first that first loop is always kind of tricky since it wants to slide around since this is a oil drain bolt, so it is a little oily even though I've wiped it all down and whatnot. So and the whole reason I'm just putting this in right now is I, I mean it's it's still dripping a tiny bit, but. I need to use my I need to use my drain pan for my filter since I'm sure there's some oil up there and uh, yeah we'll be good to go so there's that there we go taped up real nice we'll uh, we'll install this and then we'll get to we'll get to the filter part there we have it drain plug is in um, what's pretty cool is this is actually a stainless oil tank someone made. It came on the bike when we originally, uh, like when I originally put everything together, I actually had it sent out for chrome and the chromer polished it up and he's like, hey, this thing's actually, thing's actually stainless. It was so dull and cruddy and scratched. It just looked like, it looked like chrome. I didn't think it would be stainless because that's kind of rare for there to be a stainless oil tank, but whoever built it did a really good job. All the, all the seams are done really well and, um, yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty sweet custom piece. My bike, I run a, I run one of these kind of standard filter regulator mount setups off the front motor mount. Um, I don't I don't mind it. I sometimes wish I could get rid of it, but it works so good. Everything just kind of matches. So I'm going to keep it. Basically, uh, you have from your from your oil tank back there. My feed lines underneath, right kind of there, feeds all the way down to the filter and then back uh, back into the motor. So that's kind of how it works. Um, yeah, it's just something where it kind of ease of mind and then also riding down here in Florida with it being so hot, it also gives me a little more, uh, a little more cooling capability with the, with the oil running all the way up here and all that stuff. So gonna get the filter off. I realize my filter wrench I have uh, is too small. So 
uh, just using these giant, giant channel locks that I have. Um, I loosened it up already a little bit. I got to get a little bit looser and then we'll be, be good to go. So ideally this, uh, this isn't the setup, but just working with what I got. We got it loose now. Perfect. So just some oil in the filter. The O-ring is the O-ring still on there, which is which is a good thing. I'll just double check my fitting up top there. Install the new filter and uh, put some oil in it. I'll probably run it a little bit just to get oil circulating, and then after that, seal up my exhaust. Since I'm going to use silicone, silicone. I try and let it sit for at least 18 to 24 hours, let it kind of harden up. I'm sure there's some guys watching that are like, oh, you just need to use the OEM gaskets. Well, anyone, anyone with a shovel head knows that the exhaust design isn't the most optimal or conducive for, um, for really solid, for really solid sealing. Just, uh, just wanted to double check. Filter does spin onto that uh, to my filter mount just right, which is which is what I just wanted to check first before we proceeded. Next, obviously, put some oil in the filter. Now, when it comes to oil, I know there's a ton of a ton of options out there, a ton of opinions, this and that. Um, I run I run Pen Grade. It's uh, formerly called Brad Pen Racing Oil, the original green oil as it is green. Uh, I've always been recommended this, not only for uh, like vintage cars, but also vintage bikes. It has high, high levels of zinc in it, which is supposed to help the motor and, and all that stuff. So I run straight 60 down here, uh, down in Southwest Florida. It's, it's pretty hot all the time. Um, this time of year, I kind of only try and ride mornings or evenings, middle of the day. It gets a little, gets a little too hot for me. I just want to not only for me, like sitting at sitting at lights, I start sweating pretty bad, but um, but also for the bike, I just want to make sure that it's not overheating and, and all that stuff. Last thing I would want is for it to just kind of seize up on me at a at a stoplight, as that would be that would be really bad. So we're gonna fill up the fill up the filter, screw down by hand, obviously tighten it up by hand, and then uh, get some oil in the rest of the bike, run it a little bit, make sure that I can make sure everything's circulating um, how it should be. All that stuff and then get to get to replacing the air filter and really that means making a new air filter which will actually I think be really easy and I'll run you, th you guys through how to how to how to do that all right we got oil in the tank filters on uh, just want to run it get some oil circulating through it and then and then kind of double check and uh, make sure our oil, oil level is right if we need to add more we'll add more all that stuff so Let's get it. Uh, let's get it fired up here. Gas is on. A couple pumps. Ah. Double check that we're not leaking anywhere. Filter looks good. I love that shovel head idle. I think the shovel head idle is super good with the carburetor, you know? You don't get that from an EFI bike. Okay. So what I'll do right away is I will uh, double check my oil level, like I said. We will go from there so perfect we're still nice and uh nice and full pull the dipstick and it's uh totally green that's why they call it the original green oil who would have thought next up air filter time air filter i've had this on here for i mean since i built the bike about six or seven years ago now and i've never really Replace the filter. I've taken it off and, and wiped it down and cleaned it. It's kind of with like the motocross degreaser stuff, um, but it's it's getting to be that time where I should just replace the actual foam. So that's what we're going to do here. It's really simple. I mean, it's just held on by uh, by that center nut, and then you have 
you have this plate that bolts on there. Um, really, really nice, nice setup. Uh, the guy who makes it, Boil Custom Modem, Boil Custom Moto, uh, or BCM, uh, Kim Boyle. I think he's an old, old mountain bike guy. And the issue is, is he makes it. He makes a really cool, a really cool small air filter. Um, you can see the foam is foams in there. Just this all, this all comes out just like that. And yeah, my filter's just, uh, it's old. There's the gas has leaked through it, all that stuff. So I figured it might be time just to replace it and get some newer, some newer, uh, newer foam in there. And it, it's a bummer because the guy, it seems like he stopped making, uh, stopped making these filters. Um, and when he was making them, he made, he made the uni filter foam that you could just buy as a replacement. And I guess that's what I, that's, that's what I should have done. Uh, but I didn't think he would just stop making them because for a while it seemed like, it seemed like every custom bike out there had one of his, had one of his air filters on because it was so like, they're just so, so nice. They work, they work really well. Like the bike just works with it. And I know, um, with my other bike, I'm kind of struggling with that right now is to get a filter that, that works really good. Meaning like acceleration is still clean and all that stuff, but it's not something that's kind of an eyesore as, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know that the filter that comes on these SNS carbs is it's, it's, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not the best either. Functionality is great, but looks wise, it's a little, it's a little big. It's a little bulky. And for, for a bike like this, it's a little bit, it's a little bit too bulky for, for what I want. So that's why I went with something small like this, but with that comes this filter that is replaceable, but uh, not the not the most replaceable. So as you see, it's a bit it's a bit kind of chewed up just from gas going through there and, and all that stuff. So um, gonna get it cleaned up, gonna get this thing all cleaned up, and we'll get a new we'll get a new filter filter made for it. Arts and crafts. Here's that filter ring that slides in there. So it's just kind of some stainless, stainless mesh slides in there. Really nice. I polished that up. So it's a little shinier. And what I did, I had, I had, I, I've, I have sheets of uni, uni air filter foam. So just cut the old filter. So it was one long strip and basically just traced it onto here. Super simple. It's something that you can do for a lot of a lot of air filters out there. The reason I have it is for another, for the air filter I have on my, on my pink bike. It didn't have, it didn't come with any foam or it came with a really thick K and N wire filter, but I wanted to narrow the whole thing up just so it could be, just so it could be skinnier. So narrowed it up and just used this for the filter. And it's, it, it actually, it actually works, works really well. So, um, made the, made the length the same length. So when it's in there, it's, uh, nice and nice and tight work really well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a dab of uh, a dab of silicone kind of in there or a dab of glue in there. So it just kind of holds it shape, holds its shape. I realize that there's better options out there for air filters. Uh, my main concern is just making sure that no really big stuff is, is getting in the motor. I don't like, I, it, it's not like I'm riding this thing every single day. Um, granted I do, I do ride it quite a bit. Uh, but at the same time, this is going to be, this is going to be more than ample. I mean, there, there's a lot of guys that run no air filter on these carbs and just like a bird deflector or just kind of, uh, uh, um, uh, just like a velocity stack off there with no filter. So, uh, for me, a filter is important just to bet, better safe than sorry type of deal. I'm sure you guys understand, understand what I'm talking about, but yeah, so I'll just, uh, put a, put a dab of glue on there and we'll be, we'll be good to go. We are riding, not sure how well you can hear me, but we're going to take you guys for a cruise, kind of the back roads of my, uh, my neighborhood. I should be, uh, I should be getting my GoPro here pretty soon. Just going to grab it when I head back, back up north. And, um, yeah, that should, uh, that should make it where I can kind of take you guys on some more on some more rides and whatnot. Just lugging around in third gear. This is all newer stuff back here. 
Our uh, Naples Botanical Garden is, is that way. So you kind of have a whole reserve. I mean, there's some neighborhoods back there too. But uh, yeah. New air cleaner, working good. So down this way, you got this really skinny house, which is always kind of funny. And this leads to a, uh, a boat ramp and a, uh, and a park. All this stuff got flooded out during Hurricane Ian. My wife and I, we moved down about a week before the hurricane. We weren't uh, water over road rained a bunch here the other night, but we weren't here for Ian, which was good, at my brother's wedding up in Wisconsin. Shout out Dan. So yeah, little boat area. Let's see if I can wheel my way around here in second gear. Just riding one-handed so I can show you guys this stuff. So there's the water, some giant homes out there. I know Martha Stewart has a home out there. Bon Jovi, ah, a bunch of people. Maybe it, was, maybe it was Bono from YouTube, I don't know. But there you go, and then right there, that's like a private yacht club across the way. These guys are loading up. Say hi to YouTube. Water with no fender is never a, never a good thing. But yeah, bike is, uh, bike's feeling good. One of the reasons I wanted to do an oil change in the first place was obviously to, to freshen everything up, but also I was noticing my lifters were, were getting kind of noisy. I think it was just from the oil I was using. It was, I was using an oil that I get from a Harley shop down here and it was just kind of uh, kind of generic. Well guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and we will uh, see you on the next video. See ya!